Hey folks, it's Tom, a frugal prepper. My son's Honda quit starting. And it was intermittently not wanting to start. And then it would start, and then it won't start. And then it just didn't start at all. Um, I went over and took a look at it. It has injector pulse, get fuel delivery. Compression is fine, 150 PSI on each cylinder. Uh, the uh, timing, I think, is dead on, but I didn't pull the timing cover to look, you know, but... Uh, it certainly seems to be cranking fine. Like there's not a timing issue and it has a brand new timing belt and everything on it. So, um, I went ahead and looked and, uh, getting a weak spark out of, out of the plugs and I getting a really weak spark at the coil. Um, I checked the igniter, had control of the igniter, which I would expect to because I have an ejector pulse, but you can have a bad igniter. Um, but I'm just getting a really weak spark out of the coil. So I just went to the junkyard the next day on my lunch hour and picked up a new, uh, well, a used distributor of another Honda. And that thing, I put it in there. I expected it to start. It wasn't starting. I'm like, what the heck is going on? So I went ahead and went back through the troubleshooting process. And it has control of the igniter too. It has voltage to the coil, but it has nothing, no spark coming out of the coil. So... I'm gonna take this cheap uh, coil I got on Amazon because AutoZone was like a hundred bucks for one, and you can get this on Amazon for fifteen bucks, and it comes to your house the next day. I, I ordered it at like uh, eight o'clock last night. It was here at two forty-five today, so I'm gonna take that over there and put that on there and see if that'll get them down the road. I know that's not a genuine Honda part or whatever. It's a 1997, right? You know, it's only gonna live so long. But, you know, we did just put a new engine in it, and it's got a new gas tank on it and a bunch of new parts on it. So, it's, And it's a good, nice riding little car, and it gets great gas mileage. So we're going to try to fix it and uh, go put this coil pack on it. And when I get over there, I will show you some of the troubleshooting procedures you can use on these older Hondas. Um, they're kind of weird because... Uh, they have the crank shaft position sensor and the camshaft position sensor and the uh, a TDC sensor, top dead cylinder sensor, uh, right in the built into the distributor. They do have a crank sensor up front by the crank pulley inside the timing belt, but that's a crank shaft uh, position fluctuation sensor, and that is only there on. It's not even on the even older ones, but it's on these as a way to detect misfires. Um, and it will not, that won't stop the car from running. So uh, basically, if you're getting an injector pulse and you're getting control from the igniter and you got voltage to the coil, it pretty much has to be the coil. But that's important to realize a lot of places list that crankshaft position sensor that goes up under the timing cover as the crankshaft position sensor that's not the crankshaft position sensor is actually in the distributor and uh, that is just a crankshaft fluctuation sensor which is not required to make it start and run um, so we'll, we'll go over here and we'll take a look and get some video hopefully All right, so I'm going to show you real quick how you check these. Um, first of all, if it's a manual transmission, before you do this, make sure it's in neutral and the parking brake is set. Um, this is an automatic. But we're going to go up here, we're going to check for injector pulse to see if this injector is firing first. I'm just going to use a little back probe and slide it in there. One of those terminals is going to be permanently hot and one's going to ground when the computer fires the injector. So you hook your test light to a positive and you just probe that pin with the probe and it should fire. Now what I'm going to do is put the key in the ignition and then we're going to short at the starter to make the engine crank over. But we're going to put the key in the ignition in the on position. Don't, don't stand out in the street. Come, come in before you get ran over by a car. <laughs> so, basically, we've got the probe in there. I think that's the negative side. If not, we'll try the other side. The test light's hooked to a positive, so it should go through the test light. And when that 
ground, the computer grounds that signal, you should see it flash. And we come down here to the starter and just short across the starter solenoid. And I have the ignition turned on in the car. So we have injector pulse. Now on this, your cam, crank, and T uh, top position sensor are all built into the distributor. There is another crankshaft position fluctuation sensor up here by the timing belt. That's not required for it to start. That just detects misfires. So we know we have that. Now what we want to do is come down here and we'll see our coil. A coil has these two wires on it. This one should be a positive, and this one grounds when this igniter sends it to ground and that fires the coil. So what we'll do first is hook our test light up to negative, and we're going to probe both sides of that coil. So we probe this side. This is where the voltage comes in at, and it lights up. And now we're going to probe the other side because we could have an open winding and we don't, so that's showing positive. So now what I'm gonna do is unhook this wire right here to the igniter. Just grab a pair of needle nose, yank that off. And now you see we have that terminal right there exposed. We'll go back to a positive, because this grounds it. And we will, I'll have TJ hold the phone here and basically I'm going to go onto that terminal with the test light and then we're going to crank it over and we should see this light flash if it's getting at niter control. Let me get on here. So we have at niter control but we have nothing coming out of the coil. So when we got voltage to the coil, we got igniter control to the coil. Now I'm going to hook back to my negative and I'm just going to crank this again to ver verify we have no spark. And we should see a spark jump in that gap right there. And we do not. So now we're going to take the key out and we're going to replace this coil right here. All right, you can go ahead and video of me replacing the coil. Basically there's two screws where these wire terminals go at the bottom here. Take those out. Take these two screws out. Let's hold it in. that old coil out and so there's your two screws terminals that those wires hook up to one wire is shorter than the other so you'll know where they go back
And now we'll go ahead and turn the key on and check and see if we get spark before we put it all the way back together. This is recording. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so now we're gonna be hooked to our negative on our battery post. The key is in the on position. position. I'm gonna turn the starter and we should see a spark come off of this coil. We got a nice long spark now. Nice long hot spark. So now I'm just gonna put the distributor cap and the rotor button and everything back on. We're gonna see if this thing's gonna start. All right, TJ's gonna crank it up, see if it's fine. There she goes. Sweet, we're good. All right, so weak spark on one distributor. The other distributor had a bad coil all together. Now it's running, now we can finish putting all the dressing stuff back on it and the air box back in and we're good to go. All right, so that was kind of a quick, uh, busy side of the road diagnosis. Um, so basically the reason that I check for injector pulse first on those is that tells you that the crankshaft position sensor, the camshaft position sensor, and the top dead center sensor are working in the distributor. And they're communicating back to the computer and the computer is sending the injector pulse. So then when we go to that igniter and we test it to see if it has control, we know that if we have injector pulse, but we have no control coming out of the igniter, we most likely have a bad igniter. Now you could have a broken wire or a bad PCM so that it's not communicating to the igniter. I've never seen that on a Honda. You could have uh, also a broken wire in between that igniter control and the coil. I've never seen that. Um, so those are other things to check for. And if I was questioning that, if I was gonna call an igniter, I would definitely test that the PCM was sending the signal to the igniter uh, before I probably call that and buy a new igniter. Although if you can get them for 20 bucks or something on Amazon, I might just get another one. I might just get another distributor and try it. Um, but in this case, I had a crank no start. I went out, I checked timing. Well, I didn't check the timing because I didn't want to take the timing cover off, but it sounded like it was in time. I had 150 pounds of compression on each cylinder. I had um, good injector pulse. I took the fuel line loose, had them bump it on for a second. Fuel squirted out, so I knew I had fuel pressure. Um, I could smell that fuel was getting on the plugs when I pulled the plugs out to do the compression test. It certainly sounds like it's in time. I know I just put a timing belt and everything on it before I put that motor in there. And so pretty sure it's not a timing issue. And so then I went and got a whole nother distributor from the junkyard. I put that in there and it's still crank no start. And I'm like, what is going on? It could be a timing issue, I guess, but I don't think so. And so then I just I just decided to go back through the troubleshooting steps again, make sure I had injector pulse, and make sure I had control at the igniter and made sure I had voltage to the coil. And there was this time, instead of a really weak, like half a millimeter yellow spark, I will get no spark. And then you saw when I tested that new coil, I was able to pull almost an inch away and still had a good hot spark jump into that test light. So, you know, there's a big difference between that and that original coil. Um, the other thing that we were noticing, it really, ever since we put that engine in there, is when it would start up, it would kind of have a little bit of a misfire to it for 30 seconds or so, and then that would go away. And that was that coil being weak because now it starts right up. There's no misfire at all. So that's, that's how I test those older Hondas. Um, there's less and less of those things around anymore. You know, they're all going to the, the great big junkyard in the sky. Uh, so I don't know how much use that'll be for anybody, but that's how I do it. Anyway, I'll talk to y'all later. This is Tom, your free will prepper.